In this video, I'm going to provide an overview of the data format that is produced by the Tracer add-in for Revit. So you can see I'm in Revit. I have an open Revit document, and I have the Tracer add-in loaded. So if I go to the Tracer command, um, it's going to prompt me to save out a file. And this file is going to contain the data that is stored within the Revit file, and it's going to save it out to a database format. Now this database format is based on the SQLite file format. And so what's going to happen is when I click run, it's now going to go through this process of harvesting information at the document element and parameter label and build up a database file based on SQLite. So you can see that we now have this, this contained uh, database file living uh, inside of my computer. So what I would kind of do, and just in terms of providing some additional context, is that SQLite is a relational database engine. Um, and what makes it unique from solutions like MySQL or SQL Server or Postgres is that it doesn't rely on a server client setup. So there really is no infrastructure that's built around SQLite. Um, it's a standalone data engine. It's self-contained. It is very fast. Um, the, the files that are produced, even from really large Revit files, tend to be quite lean. Um, and it just makes for a very portable set of data that can exist outside of the Revit framework and contain an entire element record of that Revit file. So you don't necessarily need to open up Revit uh, to get access to all of that data. And one of the ways that you could start to browse these files is use what's called the DB browser for SQLite. Um, this is a, a free tool. Uh, SQLite itself is public domain and open source. Um, the SQLite uh, browser is also free. And what it allows you to do is browse the data in a file, create queries um, on files, and uh, get uh, data out of it and perform different types of analytics. Uh, for our purposes, what makes this file format exciting is that we can use open database connections from Power BI to gain access to the contents of these files and, and perform uh, various types of analysis through visual reporting, uh, dashboards, and our, our very own custom uh, tracer visual, which can start to display some of the geometric uh, components available inside of the harvested data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on over to the DB browser. This is the, the free utility that lets me hook into an SQLite file. Um, I'm going to go to Open Database, and I'm going to find the database that I just exported. And I save that to this file location here. So this is that uh, Revit file that is now represented in the form of a, of a database file, SQLite database file. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And right away, it's going to load up the database structure. And what we can see in this database structure, that this database is made up of a series of tables, uh, indices, uh, there are views, and there are triggers. So these are the you know, the base components that are often present in any given relational database management system, but they're all, again, self-contained in this SQLite file. And so um, I think one of the things I want to do is make sure that I provide a, just a brief overview of the tables, because the tables are where the data from Revit is stored. You can see that we have information existing at a, in a document table, uh, the document parameters, the element table, element parameter integer, number, Revit ID, text, uh, and so on. So these are the kind of the core tables representing the, the sort of central relational structure. Um, if I right click on document and choose browse table, what that's going to do is it's going to produce this uh, preview of the data that's going to understand this record. There's only one record per document. So you can see that we have a, a document um, where we're getting the hash of the document in terms of its kind of memory composition. So we can compare if a model is you know, changed uh, from one document to the next. Uh, we have things like latitude and longitude, some basic project information, the path of a file, the name, um, project name and number, the build of Revit that, that this file was opened in, the Revit version, and, and so on. So we're getting some high-level document information there. And then if I go one, uh, uh, one table in here to document parameter, this is then 
um, creating a set of records of the document level project information. Um, you can see we're we're getting project you know things like project number um, you know some some other uh, project information. If I jump back into Revit here and I go to say the Manage tab and find project information, you're you're presented with a list of uh, parameters uh, stored here. You know address of the, the project, project status, you know, dates and such. That is essentially all represented in this document parameter table. If I go back to the database structure where things start to get really exciting is when I browse the element record. And what the element um, table allows us to do is, is see and understand um, all the elements that are contained inside of the file. And what we're getting access to here are Every, anything from wall types to area schemes to panel types to family instances to basically anything that you can kind of imagine being inside of a Revit file is, is typically represented in some way in this table. Um, we're providing fields, for example, if you wanted to search by the category of element, um, if you wanted to look up the Revit ID, the Revit element ID, you can look at the type of element it is. So like um, uh, at the Revit API level, you have all sorts of different programmatic types representing these elements, and those are all listed here. We can you know, search for, for, for example, all the installation types or all of the um, family symbols, which refer to family types. Um, there's a wall type record, for example, stored, stored within this. So for each Revit element, there are parameters, right? So if I jump back into the database structure here, uh, we've broken out four tables containing different parameter types that might be stored on a given object, um, integer values, uh, decimal numeric values, uh, Revit element ID values, and text-based values. And so if I were to go into any one of these tables and browse them, it's going to list the uh, various uh, parameters that are stored on a given object, um, such as you know the type name, family name, um, as a kind of the, the name of the parameter, and then the value of the parameter as well. So if I were to kind of look at this relationally, I might perform a relational query that say joins the you know a given element to the parameters that are associated with that element uh, in order to pull up the, the entirety of, of that record. So if I, for example, start to do this, if I wanted to do this inside of the DB browser, um, I can use standard query language now to access the contents of this harvested data. So maybe I want to do something like select all from element. So this is going to give me a complete listing of, of elements inside of the SQLite file, just like I did when I was browsing the data earlier. But maybe I want to put some conditions on this. So maybe I want to do where um, the uh, category um, equals rooms, like such. So if I do that, it's going to return a list of only the room elements. And the, the room elements, uh, you can see we have the isolation of that category. Uh, we have the name of the rooms. Uh, we have the Revit ID of the rooms. and What's novel about what we're doing as we're exporting this data as well is that we are starting to store the location data of objects as GeoJSON information, and we're also storing it as uh, blob spatial data as well. So that allows one to start to build uh, data visualizations on top of these objects. So for example, if I go back to my browser here, that's how we're rendering this type of diagrammatic plan. We're using that location information, um, which is storing polygons, points, and lines of the various elements. And we're pushing that into Power BI uh, and having that interact with other dashboarding elements um, and so on. So um, what I can also do is I, you know, if I wanted to you know, pull up, um, maybe I want to look up the, uh, the family symbols um, which are the family types in the model. Um, so in this case, instead of filtering by category, I'm filtering by family type um, and the family symbol. So now I'm just pulling up all the records pertaining to, to the family symbol, which makes that 
pretty easy and convenient. So this is one option of kind of going through and querying this data. They, uh, you know, you you might choose to establish these types of queries or inside of Power BI, use the relational model to, to work through and create associations between document elements and the parameters. Uh, what we're also doing with the SQLite format is we are preparing some preset views based on different element types present in the model. So for example, a view is essentially a stored query that exists inside of the SQLite file. And so instead of constructing a long SQL query through the relational model that I just showed you in the tables, um, this allows a user to gain quick access to you know, specific types of elements and the parameter values. So for example, the floor elements table will list all floors and all parameters for those floors. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And you can see here what we're doing is we're getting the element IDs, uh, the Revit IDs, we're getting the name of the floor, the category. If I scroll across, you can see we're getting numeric values like thickness, um, you know, reinforcement volume, we're getting elevational information, um, and so on. And as I continue to scroll across, we're getting, you know, uh, there's some mark values there, and so on. So this is, you know, basically pushing the elements and transposing the data into a single table that contains the element record and the, um, um, and the parameters. So makes it for, makes for some very convenient access uh, into Power BI uh, when you when you choose to load these. So again, I can also you know choose to browse the level elements, um, which then give us uh, access to uh, you know the the levels here. So these are, this is a powerful uh, framework. Um, we are using SQL Lite in the context of Tracer because it creates a very self-contained system for harvesting the model. Uh, it requires no infrastructure investment in terms of establishing uh, server and client uh, setup. And so if you're interested in exporting your data and really drilling into the analytics side of a Revit file, this uh, we believe provides a, a very good point of entry uh, for doing so. So hopefully this provided you with a, a, a good overview of what is actually happening with the, the export process out of Tracer, um, perhaps provides you with enough context uh, in, in how you might leverage uh, such an export. I think the idea that it's based on this um, open database and self-contained format lends itself to a, a rather um, uh, novel set of, of workflows, especially with, with Power BI. And if you're a designer looking to produce dashboards based on your Revit data, hopefully this, this gives you to the point where you can start making use of, of this information and, and uh, get going on a data-driven workflow using building information.